So in this video we're going to discuss moments, what moments are, and statics. We'll discuss a whole bunch of, we're going to have a whole conversation about moments, what they are and how to calculate them. So say I had some nail or some nut here, and I can try to spin or loosen this nut with this wrench here. We all know you want to push here. This is where you want to apply your force. You don't want to apply that same force here. We all know this intuitively. This guy has a less likely chance to rotate the wrench than this guy. So this idea is quantified with the concept known as a moment, also known as a torque. And you may remember learning torques in Physics 1. They are the exact same thing as moments. There's a slight tiny difference, a difference really in name only, but that's not important right now. Right now you can think that torque from your Physics 1 class and moments, exact same thing. But in statics, for whatever reason, we refer to them as moments. So, this force will create a very small moment. Its ability to rotate this wrench is very small. This force will create a big moment. It has a much bigger rotational ability. It has a, it has a much higher chance of rotating that wrench. So the equation for moment is the force times this distance d. And this distance d is known as the lever arm, or also the moment arm. So the force is easy. This force was 7 newtons. My f would be 7 newtons. But calculating this moment arm thing is a bit harder. There is a long sort of definition you want to make sure you have internalized. So, the lever arm is the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the rotational point. So, let me make the line of action of our force here. There's that, the LOA, line of action. So now I need to make some line, some distance, that is perpendicular from the line of action to the rotational point. Well, here is a line from our line of action to the rotational point here, but it's not perpendicular. Same problem here. This will be the moment arm. This will be the lever arm. It's perpendicular from the line of action of the force to the rotation point. So this right here is our lever arm. We just need to calculate its length, which appears to be 3 meters. So the lever arm will be 3. 7 times 3 is 21. So the moment that this force creates about that bolt right there is 21 newtons times meters. So moment is a vector 2. Not only does it have a strength, a magnitude, but it has a direction as well. And in this context, in this situation, using this equation, it's not too bad, it's not too hard to determine the direction. Where, how would this force want to rotate this wrench? Well, that force would want to rotate this wrench clockwise. So, I might just write A clockwise, just like that. There's another way to write this too. Let's say here we're going with uh, X, Y, and let's say a Z coordinate system. Z is coming out of the screen. Remember, this is a vector coming out of the page, and this denotes a vector going into the page. So, hopefully you've had some experience with right hand rule. Take your right hand and make your fingers form a rotation in the counterclockwise direction. So do this with your right hand and notice where your thumb is pointing. Your thumb is pointing out of the page, aka in the 
positive z direction. So because of this, counterclockwise rotations are in the positive z direction and clockwise rotations are in the negative z direction. But of course, you know, our coordinate system could be flipped or, you know, whatever way. So just use that right hand rule logic. So in our case right here, this force wants to rotate this wrench this way. I take my right hand, curl my right hand fingers in the direction of this rotation. My thumb is pointing downwards into the, sc the screen. So I'll just say that this is a 21 Newton meter moment in the negative Z direction. That's another way to report the direction of a moment. But this way is valid as well. All right, let's do another quick example using this equation for calculating the moment. So in this situation here, let's calculate how good of a chance that this 200 pound force has to rotate this object about this hinge point right here. That is to say, let's calculate the moment of this 200 pound force about our point O. So the force is 200, not too bad. It gets difficult when we try to calculate that lever arm. But let's go through a procedure. Line of action of our force, and we'll make the perpendicular distance from that line of action to our rotation point right here. So no, no, it'll be yes for this one right here. Perpendicular distance from that line of action to that red rotational point. And here's our LOA, the line of action. So we found the lever arm, we just have to calculate its length. I covered it up with that blue line, but this distance right here is six, and we have a right triangle here. Here's my opposite side. The six is the hypotenuse side, and I want the adjacent side, I want that blue. That is what I've identified to be the lever arm. Six times the cosine of 30 degrees should get that for me. So doing that math, the moment of our 200 pound force will equal 1039 pounds times feet. Now the direction. This force, and sometimes it's hard to tell, but imagine putting this force on this object. It'll want to rotate this way. Not as much as if I put a force here, for sure, but this 200 definitely wants to rotate it in this direction. I mean, and definitely not this direction. So, it wants to create a counterclockwise rotation. So I can write counterclockwise direction. And of course, I can use my right hand curl my fingers in that counterclockwise direction, my thumb is pointing out of the page, which also makes this in the positive z direction, if we're going with our standard x, y, oops, that's not y, y and z coming out of the page. Perfect. All right, now check this out. We can, of course, follow this exact same procedure to calculate the moment that this 300 pound force creates about this point. You know, and we would make that line of action and we would identify that lever arm. But look how annoying that is, you know? I mean, it's, it's a lot harder to see, you know, what right triangle we're supposed to use to try to calculate that lever arm. So, watch how we do this. Don't forget what components of a force are. If I have a force right here acting on some, some particle, 
I can split this force up into its x and y components. I can do that. These components here, in a sense, represent that main green force here. This green force will definitely want to, you know, make that red dot move this way. If we take the components of this force and have that acting on that same red dot instead of the, you know, original green force, these two forces together will still cause this red point to move in the same direction in the exact same way with the same acceleration, velocity, all that stuff. So again, we have the idea of equivalency in engineering. These two components, these two smaller parts of this original green force will act in the exact same way as the original green, green force. It's the idea of equivalency. So looking at our 300 here, I know that this 300 will affect this rod system in the exact same way as if the components were acting on it too. So let me just fast forward a bit. If we calculate the moments of these two forces, it will be the exact same as if we calculated the moment of this original 300. And we're doing this because it's going to be a lot easier to calculate the two moments from these things and add them up rather than calculating the moment of just the 300. Like we talked about, it was getting kind of weird making the line of action and then, you know, it was going to be kind of weird to figure out this lever arm here. So, this idea is known as the principle of moments. All right, so let's calculate the two components of my 300 pound force here. 300 is that hypotenuse. So 300 times the cosine of 30, approximately 260. And the 300 times the sine of 30 will be 150. Now be very careful here. Remember, these two components are just smaller parts of this overall force. Since this overall force is applied at this point, we know that the components which make up that force are also being applied to that same point. Long story short, don't get fooled and think that that 150 purple component acts down there. It actually is acting right here. We're just drawing that right triangle to make it easier for us to split that 300 into its components. But people make this mistake all the time. They draw that 150 here and draw the line of action. I mean, they and they they think that this force is applied here in empty air, and it's not. So just watch out for that. So I got my two components, so I'll erase that bottom 150. So now I just have to calculate the moment of each one of them. So the moment of my 150 will equal the force 150 times that lever arm, so let's carry out that process. Here's my line of action, and here is my perpendicular distance. Looks like it's going to be that same perpendicular distance we calculated before for the 200. So times by 6 cosine of 30. We'll map that out, and we'll get 779.4. Now for the direction, that 150 wants to rotate this rod clockwise and doing my right hand rule, my thumb is pointing into the screen so that's going to be a negative Z moment. The moment of the other component, the 260, will equal its force which is going to be 260. All right, we need to figure out its lever arm, so line of action of that force. And here's my perpendicular distance from that line of action. So it's going to be this blue length here. How to figure that out? Well, here's a right triangle right here. Why don't I grab this length right here 
and then add that to 6. And that'll get me that full distance. So this angle right here will be 60, because this one is 30. Of course, my hypotenuse is still just 6 here. So my full lever arm will be this distance right here, 6 cosine of 60, plus this distance 6 here, so plus 6. We'll math that out. We'll get 2,340. Now for the direction, this 260, we want to rotate this object this way. Use my right hand, curl my fingers in that counterclockwise direction. My thumb points up, so this is going to be in the positive z hat. So, principle of moments says that I'll just add up the moments from both of my smaller parts, my components of this overall 300 here, and I'll get the full moment of that 300 pound force. So 2340 minus 779.4 gets us 1560.6 in the positive z direction. So this is a counterclockwise rotation here. So overall, this 300 pound force wants to rotate this object counterclockwise, and we can obviously tell that from the picture, in addition to our math telling us that as well, so it's good that we have two things saying the same thing. So let's wrap this up. Remember, a moment is just the ability of a force to create a rotation. Going back to our wrench example, the farther the force is away from that rotational point, the more likely it'll be able to rotate that wrench about that rotational point. And as we can see from our m is equal to fd equation, this force right here, here will have a bigger moment arm. So just like we sort of suspected intuitively, this one will have a better chance to rotate that wrench. It has a bigger moment. We also talked about that principle of moments. Another way of calculating the moment of a force. Many times it makes it a lot easier to calculate the moment of a force. And finally, just know that this equation for calculating moment really is just the moment equation you use when you're dealing with a two-dimensional problem. This equation right here is actually a smaller part of a more general moment equation that works whether we're in 2D or 3D, and it involves the cross product. And we'll get into that 3D vector cross product moment equation in the next video.